Hey everyone, I'm going to be showcasing my Salmon Nigiri build. This one in particular does not use any nuclear power plants, so a lot of the energy has to be manually crafted and provided to the wild net fishing and fishing platforms to get the salmon that you need for Salmon Nigiri. I'm going to be showing you how the build is performing, what every building is making, and give you some advice on how to go about this build because this one can be pretty complicated and expensive. This video might be a little longer than some of my other ones, but I'm going to do my best to keep it as organized as possible. This design is doing 258 salmon and nigiri per hour which is incredible considering that no nuclear power plants are being used if you did use a nuclear power plant you could have passive energy to your wild net fishing or fishing platforms and that would increase the efficiency because then you wouldn't need to wait for a fisherman to grab energy from the warehouse and take it all the way to the fishing platforms just to get salmon and you also wouldn't need to craft a bunch of energy doing uh wind turbines or crude oil in the power plants so you save a lot of space and you save a lot of time so if you did do nuclear power plants you could probably get over 300 per hour now this build showcase i am just showing you this uh design that you could get to or an idea on how to create a design where no nuclear power plants are being used but you're making a bunch of salmon nigiri you could just sell those salmon nigiri get a bunch of stars during the competition and get a bunch of cash and then once you have enough cash you transition to nuclear power plants if you would like to before i show you what every building is making i just want to quick go over what you actually need to make salmon nigiri it's not that hard to actually craft them that's why you can craft so many of them so you would craft salmon nigiri in a sushi restaurant which would require one white rice one salmon and three energy preferably you want the three energy to be fully passive so the sushi restaurant workers won't have to waste time gathering the energy and three passive energy is not that hard just put it next to your power plant the sushi restaurants are not negatively impacted by anything so they don't have to worry about and with the energy out of the way they just have to pick up white rice and salmon so white rice and it gets stored in the storehouse same thing with salmon nigiri and the salmon gets stored in a seafood warehouse same thing with shrimp and fish chum now in order to get the white rice that's not that hard you would need a mixing tent you would craft it at a mixing tent using two husk rice and one energy once again you would probably want that energy to be passive from the power plant and the husk rice comes from rice fields which need eight passive water to grow 10 water in order to build but you could just have wells beside and build them that way providing the extra water that they need to grow and the tractors would be in charge of actually picking up that husk rice and taking it to the silo for your mixing tent workers to pick up and make white rice with. So making white rice is no problem, it's very easy to do. It's the making the salmon is the tricky part. So salmon is crafted in two places, the wild net fishing and the fishing platform. They do operate a little differently. I'm going to start off with the wild net fishing. This one requires less resources but takes longer to craft. At a green craft timer it will take 180 seconds which is 3 minutes and it requires one fish chum and three energy. They also need to be placed right next to a waterway so the ocean edge or a river edge if you had one. Now the fish Fishing platform on the other hand it will take more resources but craft it faster so it'll take two fish chum and six energy on a green craft timer it'll craft it at 30 seconds this one says 60 seconds because it's being affected by one dirty and while I'm bringing it up now these are negatively impacted by dirty so you have anything that's casting dirty on these it will slow them down so preferably you do not want any dirty to be casted on them especially on the wild net fishing ones because they already take long enough as it is and they're the ones that require less resources and the only other thing i was going to talk about for the fishing platform is that it needs to be next to the open world edge in order for you to be able to place it so that's the difference wild net fishing is placed next to the waterway and the fishing platform is placed next to the open world edge now the reason that these don't have passive energy is because they are negatively impacted by dirty and a power plant actually casts dirty so you can't provide energy from the power plant or else they'll be fully impacted by dirty and they'll just be way too slow and you would need a bunch of them in order to make it worthwhile and it, it just won't be worthwhile so that's why you can't really provide passive energy with them with the power plants now the thing is there is also something called the nuclear power plants or nuclear power as it's called in the game but i always call it nuclear power plants so this normally costs 10 million cash without any nfts but it also requires five steel five iron and five energy to build it also has really high wages but the cash is the main problem here the second problem is the steel 
10 million cash takes a long time and you're not just going to need one of the nuclear power plants you're going to need a couple of them in order to fully provide all the passive energy required for all of your wild net fishing and especially the fishing platforms because they need more energy and also the steel in order to get steel you need to get iron first in order to get iron you would need to build mines and with the mines you can place them on the open world edge if you use shallow mines you'll be able to, able to make iron and then eventually you'll need to build the steel mill which also needs to be placed next to a water pump and a paved road and you can make steel it's a really long and drawn out process that yeah that whole process will take some time it's also not that cheap because steel mill by itself costs i, I believe 1.5 million without the use of any enchanted ornament nfts so that whole process is really expensive it's time consuming but it's the only way to get to nuclear power plants if you wanted to do that uh, which is why I personally don't think it's a good idea to go for nuclear power plants right away. You may want to consider creating something where you can sell salmon and giri for a couple of hours and after you have that cash then you can build a nuclear power plant. However, if you are planning on doing that, what I do suggest you do before that is gather up all the steel that you're going to need. So you probably do want to have warehouses uh, so you can store your energy in of course, but you want to be have some steel that's stored in there so you can use it later for your nuclear power plants probably need some iron as well so you might need like two extra warehouses temporarily just to store those materials and then once you have all that money because eventually you will get all that money if you just keep selling salmon and giri for a couple hours it gives a lot of cash 250 salmon and giri will give little over 10 million cash after wages so yeah you get a lot of cash but yeah once you have all that cash you would then build your nuclear power plants with the spare materials that you have and then you can complete your setup where you have full passive energy and make your build even more productive now other thing is that making last minute changes or building things in the end with this not just this design but this whole meta in particular it's really difficult this whole build design when it comes to fishing you don't actually need wood at the end so i'm gonna be of course i'm gonna go back and explain all these buildings but you see how i have two trees here i don't actually need wood none of this stuff needs wood in the end the only reason i have these two trees is so i can you know gather wood and even make lumber if i need it so i can use that to build anything that i may need to build if i need to make changes if i need oak wood then i would just replace these for oak trees because some of these buildings do need oak wood a lot of oak wood is required when you're actually building this up of course a lot of lumber and energy as well and even a lot of water for some of these buildings so building all of this out takes a long time it's so expensive you'll be able to see that on the visualizer once i change that in the end so yeah, it, you're going to need to be patient. You're going to need to have a good plan. And I'm not even done talking about all the cash costs yet. So first of all, the biome is going to be a forest and th there's a lot of trees. So right there, it's going to cost you about 2 million cash to clear all those trees and the rocks. Now, the next thing is the seafood warehouse in order to craft ice just to give you just a quick summary you would need to build either a master wizard's tower or a water facility the master wizard would allow you to craft ice blocks very quickly and the water facility would take a long time to craft ice blocks either way you can craft ice blocks the difference here is the cash so water facility is way cheaper than the master wizard it's just takes more time but i would personally just do uh one or two water facilities you are going to need two water drums for ice so you can either craft it in the same water facility or use water pumps uh, whichever is easier for you and then you're going to need three passive gold this goes for the ice block in the water facility or the master wizard either way you're going to need two water drums and three passive gold in order to get passive gold you would use either the wizard's workshop which provides one passive gold cold to all buildings next to it or the Santa's factory which provides two passive cold to all the buildings next to it once you have your ice blocks then you can finally build your seafood warehouse each one requires five ice blocks so you're probably going to want a couple ice blocks and you would be better off already having a design in mind 
because rebuilding these seafood warehouses is a huge pain. If I needed to build another seafood warehouse, I would need to go through the whole ice collection process again, which means I would need water facilities and I would need the wizard workshops again to get the passive cold. And I usually I would do that like in a chunk here, just replace some buildings and then I'd have to build the buildings that I needed again. It's a whole long process. I suggest you make sure you get the correct amount of ice you need, like really make sure that you get the correct amount of ice that you're going to need to build these seafood warehouses. Make sure that you properly build the seafood warehouses in the correct spots and make sure you don't need to move them again in the future I suppose so that's all the advice I can give on that I've been rambling a lot but I do I did want to get all that information out there so now I'm going to show you what all the buildings are going to be making there are two tree farms and both of these tree farms are affected by one salty you could also replace these with oak tree farms so these are just here in case you need to gather wood or oak wood to build other buildings and it's five passive water there I have 10 seaweed farms these are positively affected by salty so if you don't have any salty on them they'll be red timer and they'll be green timer with three passive salty which means they would need to be next to the ocean edge however as you can see i have wild net fishing platforms there so the seaweed farms here they are affected by two salty so they still craft seaweed pretty fast uh, it's better than having them on a red craft timer and i have a total of 10 of these and 10 of these gives me all the seaweed that i need for my production i have six shrimp farms these require seaweed in order to make shrimp and the aquaculturists are in charge of the shrimp farms and they just need to pick up seaweed from the silos that are nearby so you can see that i can get shrimp pretty quickly from these and i have six rice fields these need eight passive water to grow or 10 water to build and i have six of them all on green craft timer so that gives me all the rice that i need and while i'm here i'm going to show you the fishing platforms and wild net fishing so the whole ocean edge is covered by the wild net fishing so i have 16 of them all on green craft timer none of them are being hit by any dirty because the dirty would slow them down and nothing is passive all the energy has to be manually provided to them same with the fish chum and the fishermen are in charge of doing just that. They'll collect the energy from the warehouse, they'll collect the fish chum, they'll bring it to the wild net fishing, and once it's done crafting, they'll pick up the salmon, they'll bring it to the seafood warehouse. Uh, so that's why I have fishermen houses right here, but I also have some over here. In total, I have 11 fishermen houses. So 11 fishermen houses in total. Also, I have two fishing platforms. These are the ones that require more materials. They are on the yellow craft timer because they're affected by one crude oil from the oil pump if you did need to improve your production then you would remove this oil pump and then you'd be able to craft it a little faster just keep in mind that you're going to need more energy and fish chum in order to actually do this the only reason i have it affected by one dirty is because i already don't have enough energy to produce more salmon nigiri so i'm already capped out but that's just an idea you could even build more of these like i could have built another one here and another one here if i replace this oil pump and then i'll have even more production but it all just depends on how fast you're crafting energy and that would depend on which nfts you are using i also have two wells in the end you don't need these the wells are just here because well in case <laughs> in case you need water to build anything uh that's why they're there they are being impacted by one dirty by these two oil pumps if you needed water quicker you would just get rid of these oil pumps and rebuild them later since getting the wood here as you can see won't be that much of an issue moving on i'll show you the wind turbines and the oil pump Almost all the wind turbines are on green timer, so I'll cycle through them. That's seven, and then on the other side, I should have seven more on green craft timer. I have a total of 14 windmills on green craft timer, and two of them are on yellow craft timer. They're only affected by one shade from the aquaculturist house. It says three shade, but two of those shades are they are casting themselves, so they're only affected by one shade. So 16 windmills, 14 are green craft timer, two are yellow craft timer. That gives me a bunch of energy. You would think I would be overproducing energy, but no, all of the energy is being used all of it my warehouses barely ever have energy so you probably noticed all the crude oil pumps in total i believe i have what what is it at I have 19 crude oil pumps. That allows me to make crude oil for the gasoline, of course, but I also need crude oil to craft extra energy with the power plants. And I can't really have any other buildings here or else it would negatively impact the wind turbines because they don't like the shade. 
that's why I have them set up that way. I'm going to show you the workers. So I have two tractors in charge of picking up the husk rice. I have one logger and his only job is to pick up wood, which is not required for anything. It's just there in case I need to build anything. And six forklifts in charge of picking up all the energy from the wind turbines and the crude oil from the oil pumps. I have eight aquaculturist houses in charge of taking seaweed to the shrimp farms and collecting the shrimp. I have a total of 12 seaweed farmer houses. They are in charge of picking up seaweed and taking it to the silo. And I already showed you the fisherman houses, but yeah, 11 of those. As for the storage, I have two silos. They store seaweed and a rice. I have two warehouses that store the energy, but they can also store the steel and iron if you have those set aside. I have two storehouses that store white rice and salmon nigiri. I have two fuel storages. These store gasoline, petroleum, and crude oil. You could get by with just one of them, but I like the idea of having one on each side. That way you make sure that your refinery can pick the ones up next to this fuel storage and then this power plant can pick up the crude oil on this fuel storage. And I also have one lumber yard. You don't actually need this in the end but you may want to just keep it around so you can store your lumber, wood, and oak wood in case you need to make any changes. I have a total of 12 mixing tents. The eight mixing tents that are on this center block are making white rice and that's why they're right next to the silo so they'll be able to make it quicker. And they have the passive energy from the power plants and there's two mixing tents over here and two mixing tents over here so those four mixing tents are making fish chum that's why they're next to the seafood warehouse so they can pick up the shrimp quicker and they also need to pick up one seaweed from the silo and i have four sushi restaurants which have all the passive energy that they need and they're close by to the storages so they can pick up white rice and the salmon pretty quickly i have two power plants two water pumps the refinery in between all of those are crafting gasoline and the refinery to the side is crafting petroleum. I also have a lumber mill which is used to craft lumber in case I need it. It's not actually required in the end so you could replace it but you may want to just keep it around until you are sure that you don't need to make any more changes. And of course I'm using a trade depot to sell everything. It's only 30 second trade time so everything gets sold pretty quickly. Here's what my auto sell looks like. So salmon nigiri is at 10. Salmon and fish chum are at 12. Shrimp is at 16. I have it set up this way because I'm running two seafood warehouses to have a store capacity of 40 so I'll never go over the amount where it would jam up my seafood warehouses this way. Uh, gasoline I am auto selling at this time I haven't had an auto sell amount of 60 this way I can make sure that I always have enough space for crude oil that needs to be picked up by my power plants in order to make energy. I have white rice at 20 I could have this at 30 if I wanted to but no need uh, I am running two storehouses so I have a storage capacity of 40 there 10 for this salmon and giri, and I suppose 20 for the white rice but yeah you could have 20 or 30 for white rice it's the same thing seaweed i have this at a sell at of 30 because i need to make sure i have enough space for husk rice which i have an auto sell at amount of 10 this means that my silos will never get jammed crude oil i have a sell at of 10 just in case for some odd reason it makes too much crude oil i would also suggest having petroleum at a sell at amount of 10 but you should have no issues with petroleum at all it should just all get turned into gasoline you don't need to sell lumber or wood or oak wood even if your lumber yard gets jammed which I jam mine on purpose but uh that doesn't really affect anything you don't need to auto sell energy either unless you're trying to make space for steel or iron but yeah you, you don't need to auto sell that so that's what my auto sell looks like right here so this is what it looks like on the visualizer as you can see this design costs about 20 million just to build remember you need 2 million to clear all trees and rocks and the process of getting the ice blocks those buildings are going to cost you 5 mil if you do it as cheap as possible so you're looking at 27 million cash just to get everything that you need to well get to this point and wages are 23,120 per minute i'll scroll down just so you can see what all these other buildings are down here you're probably wondering where you're going to get the cash to build all this now for the august 8th 2023 competition both salt and white rice will be cash boosted so salt will give you 8,000 cash for each one and white rice will give you 6,800 cash for each one so in the visualizer i put up a couple of stages here to give you an idea of what you could do uh, the very first stage the start is how the biome should look like at the very beginning and here on you can see some ideas i made on how to start up a salt rush and how to progress towards it until you get to full passive gasoline production and at some point you would transition into also selling white rice to get even more money so you would sell both salt and white rice now these are just ideas i didn't test this out and uh, hopefully it gives you an idea of what you could do to gather up all the cash that you need to eventually 
get to the finished design. You can find the file for this on my Discord, and if you need an invite link to my Discord, check the description of the video. And in case I didn't address it, yes, there are empty spots here. As you can see, there's a total of six empty spots. Can't really put anything here, and I probably shouldn't put more crude oil pumps or else it would slow things down, as you can see. Or you can't really put buildings here or it would slow down the wind turbines. So that's why you can't really put anything in here. I suppose you could put like decorations if you really wanted to, but the decorations wouldn't do anything. I mean, if you happen to have NFTs that don't cast shade, then I suppose you could put them there. But these spots, what you could do is just have temporary builders in them. So if you do decide you need to build something, you're just going to need to put builders on those spots temporarily. And yes, it's going to impact your energy production or even your rice production. But you're, you're going to need builders to build stuff for last minute tweaks. So you could just have them there temporarily and then remove them. That's what you could use them for. But yeah, if you have any other better ideas on what you could use those for, then go ahead. <laughs> so maybe you could improve the build even further. But I spent a good amount of time on this build design and I think I got it to a point where I don't see how you could improve this one unless you went for nuclear power plants, which yes, you could improve it after that point. But improving it more without nuclear power plants, that one might be pretty tricky. Just to show you, no NFTs are required for this as usual. I'm not using any Miranda skins. I'm not using any effect cards that would otherwise improve my production rates. I'll also show you my production monitor. Just keep in mind that this might not help you out that much because the energy could vary depending on how you're doing everything. Like I'm using both fishing platforms and wild net fishing. So it's not going to be like one to one. You can't exactly figure it out. Uh, the same goes for the fish chum. And uh, speaking of fish chum, that gets overproduced a bit. Same thing with the white rice that gets overproduced. So yeah, some things get overproduced, especially seaweed. It, you'll just sell that out, so it'll be fine. And you'll still get all the salmon degree that you need. I do believe that this build design is going to be competitive enough. I don't think that many people are going to put in all the effort just to get to nuclear power plants and improve the rates even more. So I do honestly believe that this production rates, you should get top of 1,200. But if you do decide to use this or it helps you improve your build, let me know. I always love hearing back from you guys, seeing how you improved your build design with the ideas that I share here. Anyways, that's all I have. I know this one was pretty long, but I hope you found it helpful and informative. If you did, leave a like, leave a comment. If you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing. If you want to help support the channel, I have links in the description of the video. Feel free to check those out. And as always, I appreciate your support and thank you for watching.